Welcome everyone again to our Missy Care Online Health Talk. So today we will talk about kidney health. Uh, March of every year is our World Kidney Day. Uh, this year's theme is Kidney Health for All. So in conjunction with the World Kidney Day, we will talk about kidney problem, kidney disease, uh, how, what are the symptoms, what are the causes and how to prevent it. So for the next half an hour or so, we go through all these topics. Now, before we start, look at some statistics, in particular Malaysia. Now, kidney failure is a very common and uh, increasing trend every year. Now, for example, up to December 2021, we have uh, almost 15,000 of people on dialysis, 49,770. And compared to 10 years ago, 2021, there are only 26,480 patients on dialysis. So the number almost double over the 10 years time. Whereas transplanted patients remain, remain almost the same over the years. Uh, like 2021, we have uh, 1,839 people are on with the transplanted kidneys. Now, what about the new dialysis patient? We are talking about 49,770 on dialysis. And what about new cases that join this number? Now, in 2021, we have uh, 9,123 new cases embarked on dialysis program. Compared to 10 years ago, it's only 6,045 in 2011. And again, you can see that it's almost increased by 50%. Diabetes mellitus is the commonest cause, uh, constitute about 53% of all the dialysis patients in 2021. And look at the um, figure from uh, NAMA published March 2021. We are expected to have 106,000 people to have a kidney problem, kidney failure by the year of 2040. And worse is 35% of them actually are actually below 45 years old. As we mentioned earlier, we have about 40,000 people on dialysis, more than that. Unfortunately, 90% of them, when they know they have a kidney problem, they are already at the end stage kidney disease requiring dialysis. So only 10% are diagnosed much earlier, but majority already that when diagnosed is already a kidney in a very bad state. Right? So therefore, we encourage people to do an early screening to detect it early. Now look at the, some figures for Malaysia statistics, particular to kidney failure and dialysis. As of 31st December 2021, we look at the uh, last 10 years. Uh, mentioned earlier, dialysis patient is 49,770 compared to 10 years ago, it's only 26,000 plus. Now, of course, we don't think that there's a drop because by the time we close the data on 31st of December 2021, some of the data might not come in yet. So we review again. So most likely it will be hitting 51,000 or close to 52,000. There has been an increasing trend. And out of these dialysis patients, we have two modality of uh, dialysis. One is hemodiasis HD. The other one is peritoneal dialysis PD. So you can see majority actually on HD. So we have 43,000 plus, close to 44,000 on dialysis. The number of transplant patients have been almost stagnant over the years, right? It indicate that uh, sparsity of the organs available for those patients who need to be transplanted. Now, new dialysis patients, these are ongoing. New plus the old. How about new intake into the dialysis program, whether it's hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis? In 2021, there was about 9,123 enrollment embarked into the dialysis program. And compared to 2011, it's only 6,000. And from this new diocese, majority actually hemodiasis patient. As you can see here, 7,477 in 2021 compared to 5,430 in 2011. You can see that it's a tremendous increase. As illustrated in this graph, you can see that hemodiasis patient is almost an exponential increase. It's not a linear graph. So you can imagine that for the next 10 years, it will be much, much higher by uh, reaching here. PD also increasing accordingly, whereas transplant in green color, almost the same over the years. And this is the prevalence, that means O plus new. Now, new cases that every year embark into the diocese program, you can see almost increasing. Right? This is low because 
it dropped a little bit because incomplete data. So by next year, the next following year, we have a complete data, we will modify the and amend the figure again. So what are the causes in Malaysia that contribute to the, the high figure of a diagnosis patient? You can see the graph here, majority actually diabetes mellitus in 2021 and followed by the hypertension. And also, of course, there are other rare cases like obstructive problem like stone. There are some cases like SLE, glomerulonephritis, or polycystic kidney disease. Uh, these are the inherited disease. Now the structure kidney actually is like this size, uh, spatial at the upper part of the back. So you can see here, this is a kidney, drain the urine through the ureter, store in the bladder here, and then it passes out through our urethra. So we focus on the structure of the kidney here, right? So the artery actually bring the blood circulating around the kidney, filter out all the dirty things, extra excess fluid through the ureter to the bladder and the filtered or cleans blood will flow back through the renal vein back to our body right so this is the function and structure of the kidney and the main function of course we know that it acts as a filter system so it's supposed to be elimination of the waste product through the filtering system and it control our body electrolyte in particular sodium uh, potassium and also our fluid balance in the body. The regulation of the blood pressure is all mainly controlled by our kidney actually and production of red blood cells. The kidney will synthesize a certain hormone, a particular hormone called erythropoietin. This hormone will go to the marrow to stimulate our marrow to work and produce blood. So when kidney function fail, it will produce less erythropoietin or this hormone. Therefore, a lot of um, kidney failure patients, they are pale because the bone marrow can't make enough blood because there's no stimulation from the kidney hormone to ask them to work. And of course, we all know that to maintain a healthy bone is a job of kidney. Uh, kidney uh, control the calcium and phosphate balance in the body to give us a healthy bone. Now, what is renal failure? Renal failure, the definition is when the kidney function is longer able to cope with the demand of our body. And there are a few categories of renal failure. Acute one we now will label as acute kidney injury, where the function of the kidney suddenly deteriorated. Uh, sudden onset uh, can be weeks or months ago, the previous kidney function was totally normal, and suddenly this week it has impact, become impaired. So usually during the golden period, if you pick it up and treat it accordingly, it's usually reversible. Rest chronic renal failure or kidney failure, or we now we call it chronic kidney disease, CKD, is a gradual and progressive disease, dysfunction of the kidney, and usually not reversible. What we can do is actually slow down the progress. And on this, there are some country, one in 10 people is suffering with this uh, chronic kidney disease. What about end stage kidney disease or end stage kidney failure? A stage which dysfunction of the kidney is so severe that one needs kidney replacement therapy to survive. So the, either they need a transplant, they need a diuresis, either hemodiasis or polyteriosis to replace the kidney function in order to survive. It has come to the stage that the body needs replacement therapy. So it's irreversible, irreversible and it carries high morbidity and mortality rate as well. Now, there are five stages of kidney disease, diseases. As you can see from the left is uh, stage 1 disease all the way, way to stage 5 disease. Stage 5 is the worst. We call it GFR. It's the measurement of the filtration rate of a kidney. How effective our body or kidney filter out the toxin. So as the GFR, the rate drop below 15, we call it stage 5 kidney disease and a total kidney failure. And during this stage that the patient needs the replacement therapy, be it transplant or dialysis. And early stage will be stage 1. Even though the filtration is still very good, uh, but there are some impairment to start with already, stage 1 and stage 2. Right, this is a classification. Now, what are the risk factors for a particular person to get a kidney disease? Now, as I mentioned earlier, the common cause is, of course, diabetes. So, diabetes is the one or the most important risk factor, followed by high blood pressure. And those patients with the heart disease or previous stroke, indicating there are some cardiovascular disease, 
and this particular group carries higher risk to develop kidney disease as well. And obesity, we know that obesity carry many morbidities. Kidney failure is just one of them. Smoking do a lot of harm to our vessels, uh, so it causes uh, kidney failure as well. Family history of kidney disease, uh, in particular, for example, uh, polycystic kidney disease. Family, their offspring, their siblings were have much higher risk of getting kidney disease. Now, what are the causes? Now, diabetic mellitus is one of the commonest, followed by hypertension, urine obstruction by stone or by prostate problem or by tumor. Glomerular disease is actually, you know, the kidney make thousands of these uh, mini structure vessels called glomeruli. And a lot of time there's an uh, inflammation in this tiny, tiny blood vessel. We call it glomerular disease or glomerular nephritis. And a uh, well-known one is actually like SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, which is very common among, in particular, Chinese young lady. There are some cases like vascular or vessels of the kidney can contribute and cause kidney failure, like for example, kidney artery stenosis. And besides the vessels, we call it tubules, tubular interstitial disease in the kidney, like for example, certain drug can cause toxicity, toxicity or harmful effect on the kidney. So as a herbs, Chinese herbs, an infection will affect the kidney and cause kidney failure. And uh, chronic infection like TB, tuberculosis also affect kidney and cause renal impairment. Now congenital inherited is the, um, the commonest thing in our population is adult polycystic kidney disease. You can see here diabetes alone contribute almost 53% of all the diabetes patients in our country. And diabetes is not only causing kidney problem because it causes a lot of uh, vessels complication. Therefore, it causes eye problem as well with the bleeding in the eyes, hemorrhage, glaucoma, uh, and also heart disease. You can see that the, the vessels that are supplying the coronary artery, the block here, they cause diabetic food with the diabetic food ulcer. You can see here it's totally get green, and then this patient definitely need the amputation to the leg. The adult polycystic kidney disease is an inherited disease, and it's quite common among in our community. And normal, normal kidney structure is like without healthy vessels, with uh, healthy vessels, with healthy tubules to drain the urine. Whereas in adult polycystic kidney, they have a multiple cysts, overgrowing numbers of the cysts of various size. And as a person grows older, the cysts are getting larger and number increasing until it impedes on the normal structure of the kidney and cause damage. So you can see here, there are all multiple cysts here and you cut open, there are various signs of the cyst, right? It runs in the family. Uh, just now we mentioned about glomerular nephritis, SLE, yeah. And the typical symptoms of SLE is the Mara, Mara rash or the butterfly rash. So you can see that the rashes over the cheek like a butterfly shape, just like this lady here. Now what are the symptoms for a person uh, to feel when they have the kidney problem? They feel very fatigued and tired. And they feel breathless because of the anemia, not enough blood, because of the excess fluid in the lungs. They feel cold and numb because of the toxin. They feel giddiness. And because of the toxin accumulating over the skin, they feel very itchy. That's why kidney failure patients, they tend to have a lot of scratch marks. Uh, they cause menses problem in lady, and they cause importance, and also loss of libido in men. And as the, the disease is getting worse, the kidney can't filter out the excess free, lost the balance, free balance in the body. Therefore, they start to have accumulation of free in our body, ankle swollen, puffy eyes, etc. Et and reduced appetite because of the toxin. They don't have, they don't feel like eating. And they may have a urination problem, either more urine or less urine. And they have a stomach upset because of gastritis, the toxin causing a lot of inflammation over the stomach area. And if you go, if you go unnoticed or it goes untreated or attended to, the patient may have twitching and fit. And worst case scenario will become coma and death. You can see here the leg here is so swollen. Normal swollen leg, when you press, it won't. As you can see from this photo, this will be called pity edema. Pity edema means that there's an ankle swollen, and you press over the ankle, there's a pit here. So it takes a while before you fill up again. So it indicates there's some fluid accumulating here.
we call eating edema. Now, how do we treat, as a nephrologist, how do we treat our patient? First thing first is control of blood pressure. Now, it's a way thing. High blood pressure, hypertensive patient, they may develop kidney failure because especially uncontrolled or un not well treated, that hypertension will cause kidney failure. Vice versa, kidney failure can cause hypertension. So it forms a vicious cycle, right? Hypertension causes kidney failure. Kidney failure causes hypertension. And if this hypertension is not well controlled, it causes further damage to the kidney. So we just have to stop the vicious cycle, control the blood pressure well and aggressively. Control diabetic because one of the commonest uh, causes for kidney failure is diabetic. So where strict control of diabetic is the cornerstone of treating diabetic induced chronic kidney disease. Lower the cholesterol, improve the circulation to the kidney. And we advise lifestyle modification, improve the exercise load. If they are smoker, ask them to stop smoking because you do more harm and further harm to the kidney. And we advise a lot on dietary treatment, in particular because potassium. Kidney failure patients, they tend to have high potassium because potassium is filtered and washed out by kidney. So when the kidney function impact, potassium body accumulating higher and higher. And it can be very dangerous. It can cause heart to stop eating. So we advise them what are the food with high potassium to avoid or to reduce the intake. Uh, low phosphate as well. We have to advise them on low phosphate diet, low cholesterol and low sugar diet. Um, I particular, I myself am very particular about the low protein diet. So we advise them on to adopt a low protein diet because to reduce the burden to the kidney in filtering all the excess protein. Now there is also a specific treatment for a specific uh, cause of the kidney failure. For example, in glomerular nephritis, SLE, we have to use steroid, we have to use the immunosuppressant to suppress the secondary cause, and we have to adopt antiproteinuric treatment as well, using certain blood pressure pill, certain medication to reduce the protein leak in the If our birth uh, measurement fails, the patient may have to embark on diasis program. So diasis program, we're talking about hemodiasis or peritoneal diasis. And of course, kidney transplant as uh, the other modality or option. So this diagram to show you how hemodiasis works. Basically, you put two needles into the vessels, and then we will extract out the blood using the hemodiasis machine to pump the blood throughout the artificial kidney we call dialyzer, filter all the dirty blood and then return cleans blood into the body through the other needle. And we do it three times a week, each time four hours. You can see from this machine, two needles. And we have to create, uh, make the vessels bigger in order for us to cannulate it each time. To make the vessels harden, easier for us to cannulate and we have to create this is called fistula. Now certain people come to us without any preparation of fistula because after creating this vessel, it need to take about one to two months to mature before it can be used. What about those coming with emergency kidney failure during which we have to put a start a emergency hemodiasis? We just have to put a catheter over the neck vessels, we call jugular vein, and there's a two pots for us. One is to for us to take up the blood then go through the machine and return the blood. Oh, this is the process how people come to our diocese, patients come to our diocese center, what do we do? It has to be very sterile, we prepare the set, there's a two needles that prepare to be cannulated, uh, to be used to cannulate the patient's vessels or fistula. You can see there's an arm with a nice fistula, then the nurse will look for the fistula and put the needle in, and then you can see the blood connecting to the machine. Then after, Four hours, we return the blood to the body and then we will take out the needles and the patient go back home. Whereas peritoneal diasis is actually, uh, we use the abdominal membrane peritoneum act as a filter to filter out all the toxins. And they have to do, uh, commonly seen what we call CAPD, uh, for, in which they have to exchange the water four times a day, every day without fail. And we're talking about two liters of fluid that we go through that gravity into the peritoneum. And then the previous one, before doing that, we have to drain the previous fluid that's stored for the last six hours, and so and so on. 
So we have to repeat it four times a day. And he has to go through this tube we call Tankov. This Tankov catheter has always remained in the peritoneum area through a certain procedure and give the Tankov catheter there. Uh, so he had to be very sterile procedure because it direct connect direct to the tummy, peritoneum. So during the action of free, during the process, that will be sterile to avoid infection tracking into the peritoneum. Otherwise, otherwise it should be a pain-free pain procedure. You can see this boy uh, doing the exchange. We are teaching her, him how to do the exchange. Um, there's no pain, no suffering. So this is a free, the two liter will go into the peritoneum. How about renal transplant? Now this is a procedure. We take a, open up the donor, abdomen, take out the donor kidney. You can see once we take out the donor kidney, it's a bit pale because we always stop the blood going. Then we put into the recipient patient's uh, pelvic area. You can see again, the kidney still remain flaccid and pale. And then after that, when we connect the vessels of the patient, it become turgid and immediately there's a blood color. Right? So you're supposed to see the urine to flow immediately coming from the catheter. And we actually, we call it uh, change kidney, exchange kidney. Actually, we don't exchange kidney. The damaged kidney, two kidneys remain in the patient's body. We add on the donor's kidney over the pelvic area, as you can see here. We call it hockey, hockey stick sign, or hockey stick, hockey, hockey. Okay. That's why we call it hockey stick scar. So over the pelvic area where we put the new kidney into the patient's pelvic area. Now, how to prevent it? After, after saying so many things, what, what you want to know is how to prevent it is the most important thing. Before I talk about prevention, you must know what are the warning signs for a person possible to get kidney failure. Swearing part of the body, lower back pain, burning sensation during ur urination, uh, coffee color urine or blood color urine, a few unusual tiredness, blood pressure start going higher and higher, and mind you, someone can feel perfectly normal and fine until late stage. So it's good that always do a screening. How do we do screening? Uh, do a urine test for albumin, for any leak of so, microscopic material, we call it a small leak of uh, blood in the urine, and of course, blood test. Blood test enable us to pick up uh, creatinine, uh, and also to calculate the EGFR. Creatinine is a toxin in the blood that's supposed to be filtered up by the kidney. So when the kidney uh, function impact, this creatinine in the blood, will, the level will accumulate higher and higher. And from there, we can calculate how good the kidney function, how good, how fast the kidney can filter, we call it GFR, right? So again, for those diabetic, have to control the diabetic very well. And then you go for a regular medical checkup. Those with the hypertension must get the hypertension controlled very well. Now today, one important take home message is that diabetic and hypertension pill won't cause damage to your kidney. In fact, if diabetic per se or hypertension per se cause damage to the kidney, but not the pill. The pill is supposed to control the diabetic, the pill is supposed to control your hypertension and therefore well-controlled diabetic, well-controlled hypertension will prevent us from getting kidney failure. Remember that. Now those patients with a strong family history of uh, kidney problem have to get a regular check. Smoker have to stop smoking not only for the kidney but also for the heart attack risk, to reduce the stroke risk and so to reduce the cancer risk. Now, if the doctor, any doctor prescribe medication, please take it regularly. Eat healthy, be active, get a, uh, adopt a healthy lifestyle with a regular exercise load, limit your alcohol intake, and aim for a healthy weight and avoid obesity. Right. Thank you very much for your attention.